With this video, I'll answer students' most common questions about the basic ECG. On the first day of the module, I said the basic ECG is the depolarization signal seen by the chocolate bunny sitting at the apex of the heart. First, the signal or the depolarization generated at the SA node travels through the atrium toward the chocolate bunny. This is detected as a positive deflection or the P wave in the ECG recording. And as you can imagine, the whole atrium is being excited and this leads to atrial contraction. After that, there is a perfectly timed delay at the AV node while waiting for the ventricles to fully fill. Then comes the fast conduction through the Hisperkinji system into all of the ventricular muscle. And this is recorded in the ECG as the QRS wave, which triggers the ventricular contraction. All of these signals we have discussed were recorded from lead 2 or the chocolate bunny. So what are the leads then? The physics and math behind the 12 lead EKG can be confusing, but I want you to consider these leads as detectors placed around the heart looking for the electrical signal coming toward these different parts of the heart. There are six limb leads and six precordial leads, but I want you to focus on these three limb leads. One, two, foot. Again, one straight to the side, two in the direction of normal conduction, the chocolate bunny, foot straight down. With these three leads in mind, let's look at our first ECG. This was my first ECG, and for most of you, your first ECG as well. This looks complicated, but you can divide and conquer. The first three lines are really the 12 lead EKG. You can see these letters, one, two, three, AVRLF, V1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So basically, these are short segments where it recorded maybe three beats of my heart from lead 1, lead 2, so on and so forth. So it was measuring the same beats from 12 different directions. So that's the 12 lead EKG. The bottom three represents the rhythm strips. This is recorded for a much longer period of time, so you can determine what's going on more precisely. When you're looking at an ECG like this, first focus on lead two rhythm strip, okay? In this particular case, this looks like a regular rhythm. So we can determine rate of the regular rhythm by counting the number of boxes. In this example, I'll simply count the number of big boxes between the two QRS waves. The way this works is that one big box corresponds to one-fifth of a second. So if you see a beat every big box, that means it's beating 5 beats per second or 300 beats per minute. And if you see a beat every two big boxes, it's half as slow as the first rhythm. So instead of counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, people count 300, 150, 175, and so on and so forth. So for this rhythm, let's start with that bar. 300, 150, 175, and maybe a little bit left. So it would be between 75 and 60. Or I could have just said, that's 4.5 big boxes. I'll divide 300 by 4.5 big boxes, and it's about 66 or 67 beats per minute. After the rate, you can determine the rhythm still from the lead to rhythm strip. The first complex has a P, QRS, followed by T. Second, third, fourth all have one P before QRS. So this is one P before every QRS, which corresponds to normal sinus rhythm. Looking at lead 2, you can get a lot of information. So for most problems, you just need 
lead to strip. However, if you want to determine the axis or the location of an MI, you need to look at all the other leads. By axis, we mean the direction of the QRS wave. In a normal person, this would be moving from the SA node towards the apex, or, in other words, in the direction of the chocolate bunny. That would be normal. However, now consider an abnormal case where a weird focus on the ventricle is generating the rhythm. Then, the QRS wave would be traveling backwards throughout the ventricle. And the axis that you plot, the QRS axis, would be going that way rather than the normal way. So this side or this quadrant is considered normal. This half would be right and this would be extreme right. It's a little more complicated on the left side but we'll discuss that in the next slides. Let's put some real lead names to these axes. As you recall, one to the side, two chocolate bunny, foot to the bottom. If the signal was traveling in the normal direction, it would end up in this quadrant where it would be recorded as a positive deflection in leads 1 and foot. If it was negative deflection in 1 and positive deflection in foot, this means the signal is somehow going that way. Okay. So you can imagine this is the right deviation, extreme right deviation, left deviation, and normal. Okay. Again, if the QRS wave or the depolarization signal is moving toward the lead, it would be recorded as a positive deflection in the ECG. So moving that way would represent positive in lead 1 and positive in the lead AVF. It's a little bit weird because the foot is pointing down. Yes, your foot or feet are pointing down. Okay, so that direction is positive for the foot lead. This quadrant here then is positive, positive, negative positive, negative for lead 1, positive for foot. This would be negative, negative, and positive, negative. Okay, so normal, right, extreme right, and left. And there's a little area there where it's considered okay. Anatomically, this may be okay if the heart was a little bit weirdly shaped or something like that. So how do you account for that? That's where the lead 2 comes in. Okay, so if we draw a 30 degree line there, this would be positive for lead 1, but negative for lead foot. However, if it falls, falls within that area, your lead 2 would still read positive. If it fell in that big area, your lead 2 would be going negative. Okay? So, so in summary, you have lead 1 and foot. Normal would be positive, positive, and normal variant would be positive, negative, but 2 is positive. So you could imagine if both 1 and 2 are positive, regardless of what foot is doing, that is considered normal. And other combinations you can read. So let's do one example with my ECG. And here's my ECG. Look at lead 1 and lead AVF. The QRS wave in 1 is pointing up. Um, a bigger QRS wave is pointing up in AVF. So it's positive, positive, and would be considered normal axis. So this concludes rate, rhythm, axis, the basic ECG FAQ.